Welcome or welcome back to Watsi Obsession. Thank you so much to all the subscribers of this channel. And if you're new here, consider subscribing or hitting the thumbs up button to support the channel. This is an interview Chris Watts gave to Investigator in the year 2021. So this is pretty recent. It's interesting to listen to what he has to say. Of course, he talks a lot about God. He also says he doesn't want to be there anymore. He, he just wants to get out. Please let me know in the comment section what you think about this recording. Have you heard it before? What do you think about what Chris Watts says? Do you believe anything he says? I don't know if I do, but I can't wait to read your comments. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Not too bad. Thanks for taking the call. Yeah. Is it just is it just you or is Anna on also? I'm here too. All right. Cool. All right. So just t just talk to me. I don't want to I don't want to be the one monopolizing the, the the conversation. So tell me tell me what you tell me what you want to know from me, or tell just tell me what's on your heart. Well, you know, going to the law library as much as I have. I, I see a lot of cases, I've heard a lot of cases around here, you know, I've seen a lot of cases where, you know, the DA or the judge have had a lot of misconduct, but the judge has ruled, say, well, it's not egregious enough, or it's not that, you know, that wow factor enough to really, you know, play in the uh, favorites. I'm, just, I'm, I'm looking at the things that I know, I mean, I've never, I've never dealt with a lot of people, with all this, I mean, I'm swinging it in a ball up there as I am. And, you know, God directed me through little things like, you know, through the poisonous tree, the mighty law, and different, uh, different, different cases that, you know, just, it pops out of nowhere, but I know if God is put in front of me, and I see all these things that relate to my case, I just don't know, like, how to frame this, where, like, like, when I do this very much, see, like, I've, I've had this paperwork with me for probably a couple months, and I know I only have like a year left to, appeal some of those class B and C felonies at like a three year limit and a two year limit and I just really I really wanna figure this out where I can do it in the right time frame but also like not rushing anything and I just want I, okay, I, I just wanna get out of here. I wanna get I know that God has a plan for me and it's not it's to be in prison right now but it's not stay here. Because he brought me here for a reason. But yeah, all they want to do is put me outside. I know I just can't sit here and just wait. The wait for I know there's waiting, doing nothing, and there's waiting that I'm uh, seeking an action verb. That's what I'm doing. But I also want to know like, what action to take because I have no, no intellect when it comes to the law. But I know he can teach me. And that's what I'm just waiting for. Like things that all the clean. I just don't know how to do it. I got you. Um, and you don't have the benefit of of an attorney that uh, is in your hip pocket, so to speak. Um, um, okay, I've, I've got I've got a couple attorneys here I can talk to uh, that can maybe help. Uh, you know, get 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 some good results, get some good advice for you in terms of forms and what to say, things like that. Uh, that's not going to be an overnight process for me to you know get the results you know we want it's going to take some time but um, you know I'm, I'm not saying overnight but I am saying maybe several days or a week or so um, okay. so let me see what I can do along those lines because um, I know I know I know you're in a tough spot and it's uh, how do you how do you know how to do something when you don't know what it is you need to do so exactly. it's it's tough. So I get I get it's not it. It's like a trial by error thing, but I know in the law, but the law is like, all right, you're gonna run into you're gonna run into certain things where the motion's gonna get denied, or like whatever I write down, the judge might say, well, that's not that 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 well, what what you're claiming isn't enough to go back to you're not warranted this trial, you're not warranted to have this appeal granted, you know, denied. I was like, well, you know, what do I do then? You know? Yeah. And I just, I don't want to get, you know, this art going to happen. I know it, it'll probably happen at some point, but not all motions are, are all appeals or granted. But I, that's why I want to make sure I like this the right 
away where when I go to there they see like oh well like do I put everything down that I know or just like I don't want to put everything down they know everything that I'm on you know well okay let me let me address a couple things in what you just said first of all you you live in a you live in a closed society now every door is shut in your face you cannot go from one you, you go to one wall you can't go further you got to turn to your left you can't go any further so you know what I'm saying you're in this perpetual this room with no with no door so you cannot get through you, you, you got that you understand that what I'm trying to say so you world you your world is controlled you you hear the word no probably more than you hear the word yes in that in that system so one thing you need to be very accustomed to is being denied being turned down being told no you with me yep. okay now some people lose will lose hope very very quickly because every everywhere they turn every turn time they talk to someone they're hearing things they don't want to hear they're, they're being told no you can't do this you can't have that you can't go here you can't go there we're you know you're 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 your uh, whatever legal action you're trying to do. Whatever you're trying to do, you're always being told no. What you can't do is allow yourself to lose hope. Don't take no for an answer. And don't give up the first time you're told no. You, you understand? Yeah. So the key in all this is you you got to be strong. You've got to be physically strong. You've got to be mentally strong. And you've got to understand that, you know what? You're, you're the underdog, but underdogs, underdogs can win. They, 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 can, they can be a dog in the fight. So I want you to get this attitude that no matter, no matter um, what you do, don't take, we're not going to take no for an answer. They tell us no, we're going to try again. They tell us no again. We're going to try again. You've got to. You've just got to keep persevering and don't lose hope. Okay? Because I tell you what, you lose hope, you lose your life. All right. Um, so so just just keep a positive attitude about all that, and 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 keep don't don't take any steps back. Just keep moving forward, even if it's a small step. Move forward and not backward. Okay. Okay, just like in my devotional today, it was Mr. Esther, it was a door of hope, and yeah, the Lord was speaking to Esther, and uh, she was saying uh, to the Lord, yeah. I've led you to the wilderness, but I, I will plant in, in that wilderness vineyard, if you go through the valley of the corn, which is the valley of trouble, I will put a door of hope. But uh, even though you're in the wilderness, you're going to plant vineyards in that wilderness, just though you're in the valley of trouble, there's going to be a door of hope in that, in that trouble. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm bad. I'm I'm proud of you. Good job. Keep keep that up. Keep keep your keep your nose in that book too. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. So, Chris, what were you saying before we got cut off about um, when he asked? I can't remember what it was, but you were talking about the evidence and your confession that wasn't true. Um, well, it's, I just know that. Like, I've never experienced any collection before. Like, from the tragedy that happened, from the law enforcement, the interrogation, the jail, the prison, all this was new. Yep, all this was new. And I know that, even though I've never had something like this that happened before, I knew the shock and the trauma was there in my mind. I didn't know how to process things. Every question that they asked me, I was just agreeing with them and just going along with what they said because I was like, well, I had to tell them something. And, even when they came here to prison and interrogated me, they were in the street clothes acting like they didn't, you know, they were just talking to me when they were actually interrogating me again. And I know for a fact that, you know, that interrogation and I used because they were here in Wisconsin and they're all all out of base. So all that is like, no, boy, if it's still, they're going to try to use all this stuff against me. But I know that from that interrogation to the first one, and all that was like a like a coercive type 
type of psychological intimidation of someone that, you know, had never been in that situation before, and they just used that to their advantage. Well, Chris, what what you what you witnessed firsthand is um, <laughs> is is a is a game. It's it's like getting back to the old uh, biblical days where you've got you've got the big uh, Roman soldier in in the pen with you know the the little guy and. You're fighting for your life, and you don't know you don't know you don't know what to expect. But you just—that's a terrible analogy. And I'm sorry, but I'm just saying um, you 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 just didn't know what was going on, and 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 it's a game. And I, that's what I tell so many people: this is a game that they're playing. You are the prey; they're the hunter. You're the prey, and they've got you exactly where they want you. And they're going to get, most times they're going to get what they want. Because you know what? They they keep you for hours. They deprive you of your basic basic needs. Uh, and as every sec, every second that you're with them in that chair and they're bearing down on you, your your mind is actually deteriorating. Your mind is, 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 is playing games against you. And... That's why we have so many times where people give confessions for things that they just did not do. And it's because, you know what? They want to get out of there. They want to just tell them what they need to know, what they're asking, what they're interested in, so they can get out and go home. Well, you know what? The thing, guess what doesn't happen? They don't go home. And and their life is forever changed. So... It's exactly it was just so strange. But the thing, the thing I know, like what you're talking about playing a game, is when the TBI agent and the FBI agent, like when the TBI person, the woman, when she like questioned me for hours, and then after those hours of interrogation, she puts me on a polygraph, and then I, I'm like, you know, exhausted at this point, and then after that, like. I'm sitting in there alone, and I hear them, it's, 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 but I know, I know for a fact that I think we did pretty good. I think we did more out of them. I'll only think about this stuff way after. Oh, All right, Chris. Like, wow. Chris, that's a little game. And I can tell you, I can tell you for a fact that they do not administer the, pro the polygraph in the proper way. You should have been on the top of your game mentally, physically, spiritually when they gave you that polygraph. You should have had a good night's rest. You should have before they gave you that polygraph. So, I don't trust the polygraph. I don't trust the results, and they use that. They use that as a ha <clears throat> as a hammer over your head to scare you because the polygraph scares everyone because of, of its yeah. reputation. We can we can talk more about that later. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking another call. I think only thirty seconds left, but I I know that you know God can lead me on how to. Good. I'm I'm we're with you. All right, he got cut off. All right. Okay. okay. Um, next time that you uh, need me to come online, Anna, uh -huh. do this. Call call me, and then if I don't answer immediately, text me. Okay. So, my I, I have to tell you, my phone screws up sometimes, and and I don't want to miss I don't want to miss a call or a text. So, just as a backup plan. Okay. 
All right, is there anything we need to talk about? Uh, nope, I'm just going to call his parents now and let them know. Okay. Okay, sounds good. All right, just uh, just stay in touch with me. I will. And if um, he calls back and, and wants to talk again, then I'll just text you or call you. All right, sounds good. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.